Without further ado, next talk will be uh, Mr. Craig Gavigan. He's coming to talk about. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, you have to be up here wait, wait, to no. be on the internet. No, no I meant. Do you want me to move? Did you want to cut off? No, the screen, no, no, no. I, I want you to telepathically beam your presentation to here. Of if course. You do, if you could do that, that'd be great. So, um, for those of you who don't know, um, Craig, Craig is uh, what? Former admin. Um, Former help desk, webmaster, admin, I've been everything and anything. Yeah, but I, I, any, anything with any sort of trappings of power, he's been it for Red Brick. Um, he's now working with Terminal 4. That's correct. Um, and you're there, what, two, year and a half? Year and a half now? Yeah, yeah um, so Terminal 4, as, as some of our uh, current veteran members will know, is, is has been dubbed Red Brick 2.0. Um, so uh, yeah, I think there's like ten or fifteen people yeah. in the uh, in the Terminal Four channel on, on RIC. Yeah. Uh, so Craig is, has always been kind of hacking around with with bots. Uh, you're primarily Python based. Uh, I used to be, but now um, with the Cards Against Humanity bot that was written in Node.js, so okay. I started writing them in Node.js. Nice. Uh, so are you going to be talking exclusively about um, a type of bot, or are you just going to give a brief overview of everything? Uh, a brief overview, and then if I have time, I might actually, um, I wrote recently a, bo a bot that does uh, real-time information for Dublin Bus, so cool. I might see if I can quickly re-implement that. Excellent, no problem. Thanks many. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, give a hand for the great guy. So, I guess, um, let's start off with, well, what is IRC? Um, so, IRC stands for Internet Relay Chat, and it's the primary communication sort of avenue that Redbrick offers. It allows us to uh, very easily talk to all of our members or associates, and it's just basically a good bit of crack. Um, can I just get a quick show of hands here? Anyone who's used IRC on Redbrick or otherwise? Okay, grand. Lots of faces I know, some I don't. Cool. So, yeah. Um, you don't need an account to join an IRC server. You will need one for the Redbrick, for the Redbrick IRC server. But for the likes of Freenode or whatever, you can just sign up and choose a nickname. <laughs> um, I have a link. Some of you probably know exactly what I'm about to play. IRC, Internet Relay Chat. It's our half the time. <laughs> it's a pretty primitive chat program. Think of it like shipping channels in the ocean. You can't see them until a boat cuts through the water leading away. The two boats meet in the middle of the ocean to swap a load of illegal drugs. You have to catch them in real time. Otherwise, there's no evidence of the meeting left behind. Names, no accounts, no records of exchange. Well, how do they see each other? Online names. Okay, so what? We got the fist and, and what's our armies? Who is Meister? <laughs> I'll set up an alarm to alert us if either bank has an IRC channel. Hey, can we see what they're saying? In late speak. My boy, I speak leave. That's so bad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, find them on online. I'll get done. What are they saying? Funny, got one for you too. You got a trace? Yeah, but they're probably guns over 100 IPs and they'll be offline before we get a location. We should meet. Haha, -ha. touch my system and you're young. Okay, that was all me. Alright, so what? Biden wants to meet. Funk is rewriting his code. Here, wait, you guys, wait. This is gonna be over in a second. Can we get a screenshot? Got it. <laughs> <laughs> So IRC doesn't really work like that at all, <laughs> but that's it, it's it's a good enough description. I I very much lie. <laughs> um, but now that we know what IRC is, what do I mean when I say an IRC bot? And an IRC bot is basically a program that can respond to messages that are in an IRC channel or sent to the bot itself. So it connects to the server and appears to be a normal user. When it connects to a channel, it, it just appears like someone, like a human, is connected to the channel. There's no discernible difference. Um, but an IRC bot differs in that instead of providing an interactive IRC experience, it performs automated functions and can run scripts, 
or pretty much anything. So it's essentially a collection of useful scripts. So what can it do? It can provide information that, have been, that has been scraped back from websites. It can provide services such as NickServe and ChanceServe, which help you to protect your Nick against evil users who want to steal your Nick and pretend to be you. Um, and it can trigger commands to be carried out on remote servers. So if you're, say, on your phone and you're on Redbrick, but you want to run a particular command, you want to you want to list a directory or something, you, you can tell the bot, hey, list this directory and send me the contents. Uh, botnet control rooms are another use of it, uh, which Nemo has already gone and talked about. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how common it is to control the botnet over IRC, but it's... it's actually really common. Okay, Grant, <laughs> really common, really common. Uh, it can play games such as Uno, Flux, Werewolf, and Cards Against Humanity which I, a lot of you in this room actually have played. Uh, there's also bots that can use Markov generators and AI engines to pretend to be a human and chat to you. Uh, and that's funny when they get it wrong. And randomly generated insults. So, I suppose, a couple of examples. So, Grant, go to the lobby. And thanks, Pints. You've already, uh, you've already demonstrated uh, Mincebot. <laughs> Mincebot is, uh, well, yeah, it is. Um, but he, um, Mincebot is basically just a troll. <laughs> 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 He, uh, he can insult you, he can beat you over the head with a chair, he can take you out to coppers by your four wickets and lash it into you. <laughs> There's another channel on Redbrick called Bots, where... <laughs> Who's my chair? <laughs> um, where a lot of other bots that people have written live, such as Te, which can get you next case four, which can get you the timetable for your next classes, depending on your course code, which can be useful if you're talking to your friends and don't particularly want to go to a browser. Uh, there is also... <laughs> <laughs> I was kind of hoping not to show that one, but okay. Uh, there's also FML, which is uh, F my life. Um, there's, there's another few... <laughs> 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 Thanks, Elephant. <laughs> But the biggest one that I've, uh, it'll show up in 30 seconds, Elephant. <laughs> so the, the one that I've had most experience with lately is Cards Against Humanity. Um, I forked it from another person on GitHub, and since then I've been updating it, providing new packs, and... Now can we just say, uh, nobody get offended by the words fork and GitHub, please. The first person mentioned the word dog will get subjected to Yes. So basically the bot sits in there and it plays Cards Against Humanity. Uh, let's see if I can join. I can. Excellent. I think it's going to take a while before I actually get any cards. But, <laughs> but I can see what cards other people have. Because I am an evil cheating so-and-so. Yeah. Um, but this is just useful for me debugging cards and seeing, okay, that person says they have a bugged card. What bugged card is it? I am not cheating, I swear. <laughs> now, so you can see here, uh, it sent me my cards and it looks like it hasn't, looks like it hasn't split the cards, which is good, because it does that. So, the card was, what's my secret power? We need approval, cooking mama, angels interfering in the voice of Hermes. Well, I think I'm going to go with angels interfering with an otherwise baseball game. I can clearly talk to celestial beings. So, as you can see, that's quite fun. It's a bit, it's a bit of a distraction when you're, in your when you're in your lectures and you don't really want to pay attention or whatever. Go to your lectures, pay attention. Uh, there's also a werewolf, which is kind of dead, and that's kind of my fault, and I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but werewolf was 
or is rather, a game that plays mafia. There's wolves and you have to find the wolves before they kill all the villagers. And uh, everyone is a liar and a wolf and don't believe anything anyone says. But, uh, moving on, why is this suddenly? Yeah. So, that's a, bit, that's a bit of an example of bots. There's, there's lots of them. There's, there's probably way too many to actually go into any depth on how, they, how those particular bots work. But how do I make one? Well, what do you want it to do, really, I guess? I mean, there's no really point in having a bot that sits there in a channel and does nothing. So give it a purpose. We don't really want, we don't really want a bot sitting there for no particular reason. What are you smiling at, Colby? <laughs> uh, and then once you've decided what you want to do, then you're going to have to decide what language you want to write it in. So you can pretty much write it in any language you want, as long as it can connect to the internet and maybe read from a socket. Ideally, it would have an IRC framework that you can use and base your bot off, rather than just dealing with the raw IRC protocol. Because although the IRC protocol is just plain text, it's annoying to have to deal with that and parse all the messages. And someone else has already done that, so there's no real point. So why would I make one? Well, I find that whenever I'm using a new programming language, it's a good way to get to grips with the language. It usually helps you deal with stuff like string processing, maybe a bit of regex, um, talking to servers, um, sec. and perhaps you want to you know, write a game but you don't want to deal with all that networking code and you'd rather have it over IRC. Yes? Can you pick a card to win? <laughs> sorry? Your card, sir. Your card, sir. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I thought I'd quit. Uh, I think assless chaps has to win. Yes. <laughs> oh, that would be a good idea, wouldn't it? Grant. There we go. So I have a I have a little scaffold um, for a bot up on GitHub, but I just kind of want to quickly show how easy it is to create new functionality for bots. So I have a bot that does Dublin Bus real time info. And hopefully, over the next 20, 25 minutes, it should be really simple to re-implement that functionality and show you kind of what, what you need to do in order to make these bots. So, so first off, I guess, we'll go into this IRC bot scaffold. And We'll come into this app.js. This bot is written in Node.js, which is mainly JavaScript. So if you know JavaScript, you'll be grand. If not, don't worry. The code is up on, is up on GitHub, so you can read over it later. And it's not really. I just kind of want to give an example, really. And this is, this is what I have for example making. So first off, we'll create the bot. Um, the actual code and logic for the bot is kept in this bot.js file here. And then we'll init the bot. And then this looks really confusing, but it's just adding the commands that the bot recognizes to the bot. So come into bot.js, and this looks terrifying. But it's basically just a bunch of things the bot will need. Underscore provides a bunch of utility functions. IRC is the actual library. Config.json is the configuration of the bot, the client, the commands, and the messages. These commands and messages are basically an array of commands. So when the bot receives a command, it can check each of these commands, and if it can respond to that particular command, it can then use that callback. So a lot of this is using, up here is where the bot gets registered. It does a bunch of connect commands. It can do things here like, um, identify with Nick serve that it is supposed to be this nickname or you know talk to chance serve or even message me that it has successfully connected to the IRC network stuff like that 
Uh, down here is just for catching errors. You know, errors are bad and I want to know why they happen, so we need to print them out. Down here is the message logic. Um, that's a scary looking regex, but it's basically an exclamation mark before the command, a space, and the rest of the line. And then that gets parsed into in here with build callback options to check if this command is a, re is a recognized command. And down here is adding the command and the messages. So the commands file looks like this. It's quite I didn't realize that was so far up the screen. But it's fairly simple to add new commands. You just app.command, the actual name of the command that it's supposed to respond to, and then the callback here. Yeah, I just need to make sure. Yeah, that's fine. Let's say as is. So up here, bot commands, and here, bot commands, seems to be doing all the work. This is where all the commands go to. It'll get a bunch of information sent to it, and then you get to decide what to do with that information. So, oh. Come into bot commands, and it's empty. Now I'm going to make a Dublin bus parser. So I'm going to just create ourself equals this because I like self and I hate this. Now we said dbus was going to be the command, so that's fine. And the actual method that this command is going to run is Dublin bus info, so we'll create that now. Self dot Dublin bus info goes function client message cmd args. So basically, whenever this command gets called, it's always going to get passed in three parameters, which is going to be the IRC client itself, so it can send back messages to the server, the message that was sent as an array of information, and the arguments that were passed to this command. So I'm going to cheat just a little bit, because that is a long link. So this link, actually, I'll just copy that link. Move off to Firefox. I'm going to say 1620. Yep, find the ground, fine. Away with you. So, as you can see, if we append the stop number to this URL, we get the information for that stop. And it's all in this nice little table, which is, which is fine. It displays fine on the internet, but tables aren't great for IRC. So JavaScript is really good at reading JSON. It reads it without even any, any sort of you know, extra effort. So wouldn't it be great if there was a package to convert a table to JSON in Node.js? I see a few nodding heads, so they agree with me. That's good. So we'll come to npmjs.com, which is the node package manager. And we'll see table JSON. So yeah, it looks like there are a good few. Uh, JSON table, <coughs> table to JSON, I think, is the one that I like to use, because it's just, it's just very simple. And it can convert a URL, as far as I remember. No, no, it's not. It's not that one. I think it's table as JSON. Going to cheat again. No, table two JSON. Okay, cool. So, copy that anyway into. 
And now this will allow us to convert this HTML table from this URL into JSON. So, but first, we need to make sure that the user has passed in arguments. We need to make sure that those arguments are sane, that they're not going to break the bot or anything, but there's, it's rather simple. So if, if the command args is you know, less than one, then they haven't passed in a stop, and that's bad. But if it's also not a number, that's also bad. So we can just re respond and say, you know, please enter a valid stop number. And again, going to cheat because I can't exactly remember. Okay. So, what's next? Screen is very small. So next, you're going to want to actually convert the table. I might just stick with this rather than just copy pasting because that seems to be a better flow. So afterwards, you're going to convert the URL using the URL and the argument they've passed in, and then using this then function tables JSON. So once it's completed, it'll then call this function with tables as JSON as an argument. So here I just sent out the number of tables and tables as JSON. So I did a bit, this is, this is a very hacky solution to be honest, but if the tables of JSON, if the tables as JSON length is equal to two, as it turns out there's always at least two tables on a page, so if you enter in a stop that isn't valid, it will still spit back two tables at you, so you know that stop isn't isn't actually a, st a valid stop. Uh, if this, and then see there's nested tables as well, so that's fun. So if a particular table has a, uh, has an undefined value for a particular stop, then you can go ahead and go. You can go ahead and actually output this information and parse it from the JSON. But if this particular value here is not undefined, so if it's not there, then that stop information wasn't available, and that typically happens when the real-time information goes down, or if the actual st if their actual stop has no more buses. You know, it's like one o'clock in the morning. Why are you checking double bus? Get a taxi. So then you just send back no real-time information is currently available for this stop. And so those are the controller logic. That's basically like all the logic that the bot is going to apply to the data it's going to have. Um, there's also another concept, because um, the way I've set up the bot is it's kind of model view controller. Um, but of course there's no views because, well, it's not it. It's not outputting to a web page. So the model is basically a chunk of data, and it needs to represent a particular object. I don't think I have any models in this bot, but if I come up to IRC car, which is the Cards Against Humanity bot, we can see an example of the card. So the card has a unique ID. It has a type, a, a draw number, and a pick number and a value. Um, and this basically determines whether that card you're choosing in Cards Against Humanity is a question or an answer, uh, whether you should draw a card before, before playing this card, how many cards you should pick if it's an answer card, and the actual <coughs> text of the card. Uh, so we've seen this one a couple of times, uh, bug in the mainframe. If, if you're playing Cards Against Humanity and actually see that card, it means that I have a blank card somewhere in the system, so please tell me. So, I guess, 
how does how does IRC CA work kind of way? So I think I'll just go into a bit more depth about that. So again, this is similar to the scaffold that I showed you earlier. Join listeners, errors, messages, etc., etc. It's all very. Ugh. It's pretty much the same. So where do the cards come in? The cards come from these very long list of JSON files. I think there's just like 500 question cards and 1,100 answers. Some of which I could convert programmatically, but some of them I had, but a lot of them I had to do by hand, which is tedious at best. I still have three or four packs left to go. So this JSON file here shows you some suggestion cards, etc., etc. Um, and essentially, I think. I think that's. Uh, I think that might actually be all I've really got for you. Um, I might just quickly show you how that Dublin bus bot works. Is it actually already implemented? Sorry. Is the bus one actually implemented? It is. Yep. Yeah. Um, <coughs> so then it just shows you the stop address and. The, bu the buses that are due and the time that are they're due at and their destination. Um, I, I, I'm sorry, Valerie, but I don't even know what, what GEY CREADAC is. Um, so I guess that's, uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to talk about, really. Um, I just kind of wanted to give an overview of why of why you would implement these weird things that you see insulting people in lobby um, and explain that they're not actually real people they're not actually insulting you <laughs> so um, there's some more examples uh, up on my github there's the actual cards against humanity bot there's the bot that I wrote for the Dublin bus the scaffold uh, and a Java framework that you can write bots in, and a Python one if you're so inclined. Um, there's, there's also the bots channel, and a lot of us have written bots in there. So if you ever want to write one, or you want to ask a question, or you have an idea for one but aren't sure how to go about it, please do feel free to, to give me a shout. Um, so I guess that's me, was there? Any, any questions? Did you have to do any hacky, weird parsing on the JSON that the robots were sending back to you, or are you ordering them? Um, I haven't yet. The, the module that I'm using for the Dublin bus, table to JSON module, doesn't guarantee that the data will be in the correct order, so you kind of have to, you kind of have to account for it, and sometimes hope that it comes in the right order. Yeah. Uh, do you have any like uh, preferred frameworks that you use for, say, Python or Ruby? Uh, for Python, I prefer the Twisted framework. It has a nice little IRC module built into it. Um, for Ruby, I, I've tried to write a couple of bots in Ruby, but I've never really found uh, a library that I really like. Every time I've gone to play with Ruby, I've just dropped down to dealing with the raw IRC protocol. Yeah. Ah, that's actually a good question, and I completely forgot to include that. Thank you. That'll give me another five minutes or so. So, um, sadly enough, Node.js isn't installed on Redbrick, um, but uh, obviously the bots are running, so I've installed it somewhere. <laughs> so. The bots run on Pygmalion, which is our dev server. Um, they were going to run on Azazel, but I kept running out of. Uh, I kept running out of. Uh, what was it? I kept running into U limit errors, so uh, I moved over to Pygmalion where there's none. 
So I compiled Node.js from source on Pygmalion and installed it to my local directory. And now the bots run, run on my local directory. To get them to Redbrick, generally I'll push them to a GitHub repo and then clone the repo onto Redbrick and run them from there. Um, no, not particularly. Um, generally, you might need to edit the config file to make sure that it's going to Redbrick instead of, you know, Freenode or wherever the original developer actually, you know, implemented the bot and set the config for on GitHub. IRC has questions. Sure. Uh, well, first of all, Hawk says go check out Gabbard's bot for Ruby. Okay. Um, I actually kind of feel a little bit bad about that, because <laughs> it's a fun game. Yeah. Um, uh, and how, how do you feel about wasting everyone's time with a private man is so cool? Um, <laughs> I would be interested in, fu in figuring out how, how much time has been wasted uh, in offices, lectures, workspaces, etc. on Cards Against Humanity. Oh, not probably. 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 But I never waste time on Cards Against Humanity during work. What's your favorite card? Uh, whew. Ultra Bliss. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was one, actually, I'll just pull up the, uh, the GitHub repo. Because there was one that was recently uh, submitted. There should be more labels than that. That's because I'm in Crea Bot, not IRC Cat. <coughs> uh, labels. Card request. I closed. Yeah, having your colon ruptured trying to seduce a male dolphin. <laughs> that was a good one. Um, Dropping trow and pinching off a Cleveland steamer on your chest was another one. Thank you, lithium. <laughs> and um, this one here, many people probably won't know the backstory, but um, that's, that's also a, another favorite. Um, but I guess my all-time favorite card is uh, Crayadax Pleasure. So where's Dobby? So. Thank you. <laughs> Um, LRA would like a countdown bot. A countdown bot. Okay. Um, let me let me uh, let me consider that. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'll have the skills to create a countdown bot, but uh, I could give it a go. I could give it a go. Okay. Next up is the coding competition in L101 in conjunction with OpenNet.